The One Piece! The One Piece is real! Get up, my child! So high! Yes, the One Piece is real and we can get much higher. Now, during Luffy's fight with Kaido, as you all probably already know, he was beginning to exhaust his 4th gear Snake Man despite showing that he could rival this Yonko by matching Kaido's attack with his argument Haki to split the sky. Despite best efforts, he inevitably lost against Kaido who is rumoured to be the strongest, most powerful pirate. Whether you think he is or not, Kinda doesn't matter because he's definitely at least relative to the other Yonko since he could fight characters like Big Mom. Essentially what a Yonko is, it's one of the four emperors. I would say if you're at that level, you're pretty much at the top. It's like the highest level. It's like being a Kage within at least early Naruto. However, it would only be in death against Kaido. A lovable protagonist, Luffy, would awaken Gear 5 which allows him to use more of the legendary sun god's rubber powers. Which he's had since he accidentally ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi fruit 12 years ago at the beginning of the series. Gear 5 Luffy's awakening transforms his hair and his clothes completely white. A little bit like another transformation that I know of, one that's considered the apex transformation of its series. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, within this state, Luffy's heartbeat takes on this musical rhythm, which has been described as the drums of liberation. His white clouds float around his neck, which symbolise freedom. Similar to the clouds of steam that accompany him in the fourth gear. And this freedom kind of relates into his powers narratively as well, since he now believes he has the power to do anything. The amount of haki that's released from his form is enough that it can be felt all away from the life floor of a skull dome, knocking out multiple people in the vicinity. That's just how powerful Luffy's energy is at this point. It's for this reason it's said that the user becomes this warrior of liberation, bringing joy and freedom to those all around him, making it, I quote, the most ridiculous power in the world. Luffy refers to his power as a pinnacle of his own power. There's even promotional material saying that this is Luffy's peak, the ability to turn imagination into reality. Luffy was convinced that he had finally reached the peak of his abilities, so I think I can comfortably say that Luffy is now one of the most powerful characters within the One Piece series, reaching his full potential. Now, it goes without saying, just because he can use the legendary sun god Nika's power doesn't mean Luffy himself can destroy stars and suns. Just being considered a sun god doesn't mean much, it seems to be just a title. So it's a bit weird when people claim that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm King Bullet. Please subscribe, like the video if you want to see more stuff like this, and I'll do my best to figure out how strong Monkey D. Luffy is right now within the One Piece manga. So spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't caught up with the manga yet, but I will obviously be going over manga material. So starting off with how strong he should be, well we know that Luffy's Bajarang gun combines Bushu Shoku emission, Haku Shoku infusion, Gear 4's compression and Gear 5's expansion to match and eventually overpower Kaido's dragon form, allowing Luffy to punch Kaido hard enough that it breaks his horn and sends him flying deep into the earth, ultimately defeating him. And this even causes his massive volcano to go off. It's technically an underwater volcano and these can be really powerful. The fact you can see his tip kind of implies it's a super volcano and super volcanoes can be very powerful. For example, if Yellowstone was to go off, it could mean the end of a world, capable of producing enough energy to destroy countries, so that should at least be considered. Although Kaido is considered the strongest, like I said earlier, it's just a rumour. According to the guidebooks, it's stated that Whitebeard is actually the strongest pirate who can destroy the world. And since this is like a narrator statement from the data book, which is obviously trying to educate us, gives it more validity than just random people saying that Kaido is the strongest. So Kaido probably isn't as strong as Whitebeard. Although they could be in the same range of power, I don't think it's too far-fetched to claim that Kaido and the other Yonko are in the same tier of power as him. It's also stated within the same guidebook that Whitebeard can destroy the world. It's never really established how he would do this. For example, is he gonna destroy society, which brings the imminent end of the world? Is he gonna wipe the surface of a planet, which means he would have to destroy multiple continents? Or can he just straight up just split the planet in half? It's very hard to say. However, we do know that his ability is probably what would allow him to do this. So it's more of like this hacks ability rather than something that scales to him. But if you were to be generous, we could use something like a mid end and say he can destroy multiple continents, which might be kind of consistent if you consider that there's way weaker characters that basically be stronger than that can split these ice continents, which would obviously take a lot of energy to do. Obviously, it's not just ice, he's probably destroying the actual landmass underneath, so like cracking that in half, which would make it like this feat that can easily require country levels of strength, high country levels of strength, depending on what calculation you use. And then obviously Luffy gets far stronger than that. Luffy can use Gear 4, specifically Gear 4 Boundman, 
which according to Dolph Flamingo, increases Luffy's tensile force by several times. Several meaning more than two, which is three at least. And so that's basically just making something more elastic. So he becomes at least three times more elastic, meaning if he was a rubber band with the same amount of force I usually apply, I'll be able to pull that rubber band back three times further and then release it with three times more force. And probably speed as well, if I'm being honest. So gear four is at least a several times multiplier. Then obviously if gear four is that strong, how strong are the other gears? We can't say for sure. Luffy uses gear five. Gear five, what kind of multiplier does that have? We have no idea. It could actually be greater than gear four. That would kind of make sense. But like I said, I can't 100% confirm that. All we know is it makes him drastically stronger. Like I said, when entering gear five, you should easily be high Yonko level. Gear five allowed Luffy to make, make dragon form Kaido bleed by slamming him on the ground repeatedly. And he should have power way stronger than his Kong gun. So he should at least be continent level, capable of destroying continents, maybe multiple continents. And we know he should easily be light speed in his base form, since you know he could dodge light beams from a pacifista. And then obviously like I said, if his gears do give him a multiplier of several times, he obviously gets stronger through other arcs as well. It should be much faster than the speed of light. So that's how strong and fast he should be, but what kind of abilities does he have? And this should probably be the most interesting part of the video, because now we move on to the specific skills granted by gear 5. We know that gear 5 increases his physical strength and his freedom. Narratively, Luffy gains a freedom to pull otherwise impossible feats akin to that you would see in gag shows or a power that takes qualities from Toon Force. Now this doesn't mean he's a gag character or he has the best Toon Force, it just means he has some qualities of it. Luffy can come back from what seems like death so has some sort of revival factor. Whether he is or isn't immortal is a little bit up for debate since it could just be some sort of high level healing factor that's only active when transforming into the sun god. However, he was claimed to be dead and went into gear 5 and came back to life. So maybe he does have revival, but it kind of depends on how much he can use it. Is it like a one-time thing? Can he constantly keep on doing it if he's killed? We can't say. So it's a little bit ambiguous when it comes to that. Now this doesn't necessarily make Luffy invincible, it rather just gives him hacks abilities. For example, he's able to transmutate anything he touches into rubber, kind of like Shigaraki from My Hero Academia when he touches things and they decay. I assume Luffy's power works like that. Can it work on people? But we do see when he grabs lightning, he's able to give it like rubber-like properties. So he's not actually turning into rubber, he's just making it more like rubbery. So it gives it higher levels of tensile force. So if he was to touch his opponent, that might actually give him like a buff. It might make him like able to be more flexible, more rubbery, or something like that. Or it might incapacitate them completely. When it comes to techniques, we know Luffy has access to the Gomu Gomu no Fusen, which is a variant of Luffy's standard technique, unlike the original technique. Luffy's body becomes extremely buoyant, like a helium balloon. This was first used against Kaido in his dragon form, where Luffy entered his body and expanded. That's kind of insane. Like, if you're bigger than him, he might just be able to slip inside of you and expand and blow you up from the inside. Another technique he has is the Gomu Gomu no Giant, where Luffy expands himself to the size of a literal giant, as if he was activating gear 3 on his entire body rather than just like one hand or something. The name of his technique follows from gear 3's naming theme. Another move he has is the Gomu Gomu no Bajoran Gun which is a gear 5 version of Gomu Gomu no King Kong Gun where he inflates his fist to the size of literally an island pretty much, infusing it with Bakusho and Hakusho Haki and then unleashes it at his opponents with the intention of punching them without making any direct contact through emitting Haki outward for a devastating blow. He's also able to overpower Kaido and break one of his horns, so, you know, it makes him pretty strong in general. He defeats him and sends him crashing into the ground. Luffy also has the Gomu Gomu no Datsushut Rocket, which is a technique used by Luffy to escape from inside of Kaido's body after using the Gomu Gomu no Fusen. Luffy basically stretches his arms through his opponent's eyes and grabs onto their nose to launch himself out, which is a little bit tune for, so I'm not gonna lie. And then finally, we have his most infamous move using Gear 5, the Gomu Gomu no Kamaminari, where Luffy basically can give lightning bolts the property of rubber in order to grab it and then hurl it at his opponent, although Kaido managed to dodge it. I assume that it still has the other properties, like it can give you like this electric shock to incapacitate you, so that's pretty broken. We don't know the extent of his power, can he literally just touch anything and turn it into rubber? That was the issue I was talking about earlier. Pretty much concludes all of his abilities. Well, all of his abilities he uses in Gear 5. I know he has tons of other abilities when using the other gears, but I've kind of already gone over that in another video. 
you can check it out if you want, the Naruto vs Luffy video. It might be slightly outdated because obviously I didn't account for Gear 5, but it might not change a lot of things, so it's definitely worth a watch. Voice your opinion on how strong you think Luffy is down below in the comments section. Comment down below if you want to see Luffy match up against another character, maybe I could do like a versus battle video type thing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.